Hi, my name is Keith Yamamoto. I'm a professor at the University of California, San Francisco, and I'd like to take a few minutes to talk with you about a specific aspect of graduate and postdoctoral education. It turns out this is a good time to step back and rethink grad, graduate and postdoctoral education right now because the field is so dynamic. Uh, biomedical research is moving at a rapid pace, but our training has remained static. And what do I mean by dynamic? What's changing? Basically everything. Let me give you three biggies. One is that the field of biomedical research, biological research, is moving from being a descriptive one to being quantitative. It is adopting and using the concepts and methods of the physical sciences, physics, chemistry, engineering, mathematics, computation, uh, in order to carry out its work at a quantitative level. Second, um, the uh, uh, ways that we learn things and what we need to remember has completely changed because of the internet, the capacity to search in three-tenths of a second all bits of information about a given area. Um, uh, the ways that we do our research, uh, taking on bigger problems, is increasingly um, uh, the, seeking the involvement of teams of researchers with different expertise. Um, these things are driving changes in the ways that we learn, the ways that we teach, and the ways that we do our work. Third biggie, the ways that our PhD training can be used uh, moving on to full careers. Now those first two that I mentioned of the um, a move of biology to a quantitative discipline, of changes in the ways that we learn, uh, uh, teach, and work, uh, are major issues uh, that are really for uh, another discussion. Big things that will affect uh, the composition of our uh, training endeavor, the strategies that are used, and so forth. So I want to talk about the third point. How, can we, how do we use our PhD training? Now, when I was a graduate student, it was a pretty simple um, uh, 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 equation. And that is, uh, the biomedical training pipeline existed for the uh, set of students that chose to go to, uh, to take their bachelor's degree and go to graduate school. Uh, they knew, we knew, I knew that we would end up uh, as postdocs uh, at, at, after graduate school and then as assistant professors at some uh, uh, institution. So it was simple a simple pipeline, and, and that was the way that it worked. Now we have a different situation. We have an array of careers that uh, uh, biomedical trainees can undertake uh, and occupy. Uh, exciting ones, uh, a, a big uh, set of, uh, of options. So this might be called a postdoc terminal as you look at it here. Um, uh, and there are many important options that have appeared. It's exciting. But it comes with a catch. And the catch is that faculty who were trained along the pipeline, the linear pipeline, some of them at least, have sort of held on to this notion that the real value of training is in, is in turning out um, uh, academic investigators, principal investigators in, in academia. Yes, it's opened up a bit. Uh, there's validity given to being a, uh, a independent investigator in industry in, in pharma or in biotech, uh, but that that old linear route that they undertook uh, is one that they still uh, maintain uh, has the highest value. And these other occupations, well, they're just sort of secondary, they're um, alternatives, um, and uh, so they're not as good. So we're up against it, uh, a very attractive platform, but one that's tilted. Um, uh, so that um, uh, uh, all things are not, are, are not uh, equal. So um, uh, that notion of the tilted platform is further complicated by the fact that we have many more students coming into this pipeline, beginning to move down through the net, what is now a network. Um, uh, and um, uh, this, uh, it, so it's good that our field is still attracting uh, brilliant uh, trainees. But this has generated um, a workforce dilemma, uh, kind of a holding pattern of postdocs that are floating over this uh, platform 
looking for uh, a place to land and this perception um, that, um, the, that uh, there's too many people in the workforce. It is pushed back into the PhD training period so the time to degree has extended as students worry about what their future is going to look like. And it has extended the postdoc training period, literally, literally adding additional postdoc periods uh, onto that as I've added in this extra loop to the point that the postdoc terminal threatens to become the terminal postdoc. So what do we do? Um, uh, all of this uh, has produced this kind of workforce dilemma then uh, that encompasses both the array of options that are out there and the number of trainees that are coming through the network. Um, uh, it looks, this size and composition of workforce is an issue that many are concerned about. Now, um, uh, what I see is that many of the people that are, that are begun to discuss and work on this problem begin with an assumption, an untested assumption, that the workforce is too big. In a dynamic field that is still developing, still adding on new things to, be, to do and new ways to do them, uh, I think it's risky to assume that we know what the size of the total workforce uh, should be. But, but those individuals that think this way begin, by solving, begin the solution to the problem by thinking about ways to reduce the size of the workforce. Now, in his recent iBio presentation, my friend Greg Petsko presented uh, his economic solution, a hypothetical uh, proposal that, it, that um, uh, says, let's double the postdoc stipend, and that will lead to a, a, a reduction by half of the number of postdocs. This, uh, this proposal may sound attractive. Doubling salary for anyone sounds good. Um, but uh, uh, I think it has uh, multiple prob problems associated with it. One is that it assumes that we know what the size of the workforce is. And as I've just said, that's very, it's impossible to do in a field that's very dynamic. It would be embarrassing if a decade from now there was a shortage of trained uh, uh, PhDs uh, in the biomedical sciences um, uh, because we decided to step back at this point. Uh, the second is that it assumes that there's a linear inverse relationship between the size of the current st today's postdoc stipend and the number of postdocs that would be trained. And third, um, this proposal would um, price out of the market postdocs for all except the most experienced and highly funded laboratories, a change in the demographic our of our community that I think is just simply unattractive. Um, uh, so those problems are there, um, uh, and, and what I would like to do is suggest a different approach. A change in this, in this diagram um, uh, that, that, is, that appears at first to be very simple, and that is to change the postdoc terminal to a PhD hub, um, a, uh, a hub with that, that in which the PhD is at the center, and career option spokes radiate outward. Now you recognize that all I did was to move that hub from the postdoc to uh, the PhD. But that move comes with uh, uh, two important uh, points to be made. One is that it has an obligation, it, it, it instills an obligation to the academic community to be able to provide to graduate students during their graduate training enough familiarity with, uh, with this array of uh, career options, that they are able to make a choice, that, 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 a, that a PhD trainee, the day that she gets her PhD, can confidently choose one of these spokes that entails further training to move down, to move into an occupation of her choice. The only way that she can do that is for graduate programs to take on the responsibility, which I would say to, up till now, virtually all have ab uh, abdicated to, um, uh, to uh, find ways to familiarize students with this uh, wonderful uh, array of, of, uh, of options. The second consequence um, of moving the hub from the postdoc to the PhD is that it, it more appropriately places uh, the position of making those choices. Uh, there are many of those occupations around this array that in fact don't require postdoc training, but could very well use 
the kind of expertise and thought processes and problem solving approaches that come with PhD training. So to have, have trainees go all the way through a postdoc before making that choice right, is wasting their time and energies uh, in ways that we uh, really should not be doing. Finally, that move of the hub uh, for the first time presents a, uh, an opportunity for uh, the postdoc training to have a specific mission. So the overall goal is to inform and empower graduate students with information to allow them to make um, uh, choices with confidence about the ways that they're going to move their career. And the secondary consequence that's also very desirable is that for the first time, the postdoc itself would have a specific training mission. Um, uh, it, this would be the time, uh, just as the other um, uh, occupational arrays uh, re uh, require further training, this would be the time for the PhD trainee to become um, a, a really independent, truly independent investigator, able to develop and design and carry out uh, a research program of her own, um, stemming from her own imagination. And it's also a time, of course, for them to learn uh, lab management skills, to be able to carry out best practices of research so that it, the research is carried on with responsibility um, uh, and with uh, good ethics. So the postdoc would finally have um, a, a, a real goal. So I'm confident that the students will actually get it right, that the students will be able to right size and right focus uh, our uh, training community. And when that happens, we'll end up with a happier um, workforce, one that moves, uh, a trainee force, one that moves more quickly through the tr their training period because they have an endpoint in mind, they've been provided the information they have an endpoint in mind, and they will be more successful when they occupy their final career niches. Moreover, this is a time when we have an opportunity uh, to make this the century of biology, uh, a time when we can uh, fill um, uh, occupations in ways that will enable us not only to use the knowledge that we discover in our laboratories uh, to, to push forward those, those frontiers of discovery, but also to address um, uh, societal issues, urgent societal issues, societal issues that don't have solutions right now uh, in areas such as health, the environment, energy, and food. If we're able to do that, address those issues, we're going to need people that are occupying each of these occupational uh, opportunities in order to, to help uh, society, to work in, within our society, to undertake these um, uh, wonderful challenges ahead of us. Um, so I think that the, that, that the students will be able to get it right and will be able to fill these niches both inside and outside of our laboratories.